We are here at AirVenture Oshkosh, the last day. A lot of folks in around here looking forward to going home now after a very busy week. Among those are the Sensenik Propeller folks. I'm Dan Johnson and I have the pleasure today to talk with Don Raul. And uh, I think I got that right, so that's good. And uh, we're going to hear some interesting things because I discovered that this company, which we've already seen on a number of our airplanes, has a new energy about propellers for the kit market and the light sport aircraft market, including a ground adjustable prop that we saw on the Lycoming engine earlier. So, Don, uh, looking forward to going home, I'm betting, but you've had a busy yes, week I here, have. I think. Yes, huh? we have. Yes, we have. Been a very good show, very well attended. Very happy with the response we've gotten here. Um, we've come out this year very strong with our light sport aircraft. Some of what we're seeing here, ground adjustable propellers, um, on engines anywhere from Jabiru, 80 horsepower, up to right now Lycoming, IO 233 and 0235, 115 horsepower. And are you serving the Rotax motor as well? Yes, we or are. Can you yes. at least? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, from 80, 80 to 115 horsepower includes the Rotax 912 and 912 ULS. Great. Well, as somebody in your profession would know, those are the engines that yes, are dominating are. the market. We have some other yes. ones that are coming, and that's interesting. UL Power, for example, and that's maybe correct. some more, right. but, uh, but we focus on the ones that are already right. driving most of the airplanes. And, uh, right. We do have a two blade and a three blade available for the Rotax, and we have two blade available for both the Jabiru series of engines and the Continental O200 and Lycoming O230. Well, that's, that's pretty much everybody, yes. so good for you. Yeah, we're trying to cover the whole Now, market. you've been doing this for quite a while as Sensenic Propellers. This, I mean. is, this is our 80th year this year. Excellent. We, we came here to celebrate 80 years in aviation. Well, let us add our congratulations Thank too, you. and thanks to your dedication to the industry. Thank you. One of the fellows told me earlier as we were looking at uh, one of the props, it looked more like this one, but that doesn't really matter, on the Lycoming that's sitting on that comet out in front of the Lycoming space here at AirVenture. Uh, and he said the ground adjustability was like 10 minutes or something. Tell us a little more about that. We actually tell customers it will probably take them longer to remove the spinner than it will to change a pitch. <laughs> All of our propellers have an easy pitch change system where the blades have a pin that is coming out of the blade that's drilled and, and set at a certain degree. And then we have one of three different systems. We use a cam system on the Rotax and Jabiru props. The Continental and Lycoming has a, a, what we call a pitch cartridge system that captures the blades and sets the pitch. And the- uh, Is it a different, it's a different portion system. that goes in to do it differently Yes, then? yes, and that okay. stays in the propeller. And then our third one is a, what we call a pitch pin system, which is a removable pin that goes in set the pitch, clamp the blades, remove it, and you're ready to fly. So this is not a thing that somebody has to do delicate measurements and wonder if they've got it right and so no, forth. There's no, so. there's no measurements needed. We do all the measuring for you. All you have to do is set the pitch, clamp the blades in place, and you're ready to fly. And literally faster than taking the spinner off the front of the prop, literally, so literally, literally 10 minutes or less. Yes. Huh? That's now, correct. Are these propellers available for both pusher and tractor configuration? We have the Rotaxes available for the pusher configuration. That is the only propeller right now for pusher. Okay. Is there any adaptability for water applications? Well, all our blades have a co-cured bonded stainless steel leading edge, which is both good for erosion in water and rain and also stone damage that may occur in the field. Well, that's good since a lot of our airplanes are used in off, we won't call it off airport, but off uh, a hard surface applications, turf, gravel runway, especially out west, a lot of gravel, so you'll be glad to hear that stuff. Sensenik is mainly known for metal propellers, and of course you're still doing that, I have no doubt. Uh, these are all composites, though. The ones we're looking at right here, right now, anyway. Is that what's true for the uh, light aircraft segment? Well, we do sell a few metal propellers, although for light light sport aircraft, but because weight is such a concern with LSAs, then metal sometimes is not an option for people. We do sell a lot of wood props for light sport aircraft, okay. and then we started the development of these composite propellers back in about 1994. Oh, really? Okay. In 1999, we started selling them for use on airboats only to, again, do further testing and development, and in 2004, introduced them into the light sport market. Yeah, I believe I understand that some of your uh, innovation, we'll say, actually occurs in airboats where you're 
at somewhat less risk. If things go badly, well, the boat comes to a halt. That's a lot different than an airplane that's then got to look for a field or something. So tell us a little how that works. That's right, Dan. Well, airboats is a great testing market for us. Um, and airboaters tend to be very hard on propellers. <laughs> so it also helps us to test not only new designs and theories, but also the durability of the propellers. Sure, yeah, that's a kind of, well, you can't replace that kind of field testing with factory testing. That's correct. Because yep. you probably wouldn't think to do the same things that they'll just do because they're not worried about it. Exactly, and every airboat is a pusher configuration, which is very hard on propellers. Anything in front of the propeller is subject to so oh, we've got to go through, through the prop. The prop. Yep. Yes. But in the Lycoming instance, that's what is generally powering these airboats. We're using aircraft engine to power an airboat. That's right. Air aircraft engines, and uh, they're doing things with those engines that those engines and propellers were never intended to do. <laughs> So that's some real field uh, destructive testing in some cases, uh, and I imagine some of you cringe back at the factory when oh, you yeah. see oh, that. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, we never, you're going to do what? Yeah. <laughs> well anyway, that's all just good news for folks in the airplane business because uh, airplane people are very highly focused and properly so on safety. Yes. So they kind of want to know it's been through the ringer before they put one of these on. Because you can go a lot of places with an airplane and an engine, but you can't go anywhere unless it's got a good prop on that's the front. Right. So we want to thank you for your dedication uh, to props in general for all kinds of flying, but we really appreciate you jumping into the LSA and light aircraft kit space uh, because we need a good a good American brand. We've got a lot of foreign products, and that's wonderful right. too. We invite those folks, but we're kind of glad that somebody in America is doing this. Where is Sensitic located? Well, we have two facilities. Our aluminum propellers are manufactured in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Okay. And then the wood and composite propellers are manufactured in Plant City, Florida. Plant City, Florida. Well, I'm a Florida resident myself, so I'm going to have to come down and have a uh, tour of the factory sometime, so to say. Please do that. I'll be glad to do that. We are speaking today with uh, Donald Rowan of uh, Sensitic Propellers. Where do we go? We're looking at this on our computer. This is YouTube. It's on uh, uh, Dave's site, on my site, and other locations. So you'll get a lot of views of this, and you can grab it as well. But where do we go to find out more information about Sensitic Propellers? If you want any more information on our propellers, just go to our website, Sensitic. And we'll spell out on the screen for them, so the, the fact that I mispronounced your name at first won't That's affect okay. the folks going to their uh, computers and finding more about Sensenic propellers. I'll have more about Sensenic and many other aircraft already available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us today here at AirVenture Oshkosh.